Hi, I'm Ebonique, the founder of Budget Collector, a new company dedicated to developing new art collectors like me and hopefully you. So today I'm here to talk about color and why color matters and what color evokes your perception and your emotion. And this is part of the art gallery journal that's for sale on, on the website, but I wanted to spend a few minutes discussing it right now. Color theory was first referenced in 1435 by an Italian artist named Leon Battista Alberti to describe a collection of rules and guidelines regarding the use of color. Red. Um, let's look at Henry Matisse's The Red Room. As we can see in this piece, it's red is a hugely bold color which can, can engender feelings of danger, fear, and power, luck, joy, happiness, and wealth, depending where you're from. And I want you to think about how, and I want you to think about what red evokes to you in this Henry Matisse's The Red Room. Is this something that you'd like to see in your house, in your bedroom, in your where? And what does that mean to you? Yellow. Take a look at Vincent van Gogh's A Field of Yellow Flowers. Yellow is intrinsically tied to summer light. Yellow is also extremely bright, bold, and intense colors. In the West, it is most often associated with cheery, warmth, friendliness, and fun. Orange. Take a look at Albert Joseph Moore's Midsummer. Orange is a color nestled between red and yellow. Orange provides a perfect combination of the two, combining the bold dyna dynamism of red and the friendly energy of yellow makes it a warm, compassionate color. Green. Let's take a look at Claude Monet's Walter Lily Pond, Symphony in Green. The color of nature, of course, is deeply rooted in the ideas of cleanliness, balance, and harmony, reflecting the ideas of life rest, growth, and the natural world. Historically, actors used to find themselves resting in green rooms, which were decorated with cool greens as it was believed to calm their nerves. Take a minute to just view this Monet's Monet and decide what those colors mean to you. Blue. Let's take a look at Pablo Picasso's The Blue Room. Blue is another primary color bright with variable and contradictory associations. Blue is associated with that which is calm and reliable, but is also deeply associated with sadness and despair. Unlike the warmer colors, it is often more associated with mental states rather than physical reactions. And perhaps due to its attested ability to produce calm serenity, blue is reportedly the world's favorite color pretty much across the board. Brown. Let's take a look at Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. Brown is often an underappreciated color uh, due to its intrinsic association with trees and earth. It is emotively grounded in ideas of calm nature, strength, security, protection, and durability. While remaining relatively neutral and soft, brown provides a strong base for design allowing for a secure foundation on which bolder, more expressive colors can be placed. Black and white. Of course, no color is complete without mentioning the polar opposites of black and white. Take a look at Franz Klein's Muhammad. These bold, dark colors contrasted with shows the sophistication, seriousness, and intensity, while also playing off concepts of evil, mystery, depression, and death. Due to its intensity and incredible potential for contract, black is often used quite sparingly in design and art, but not for this piece. Take a look at this piece and consider what it means to you. As we have discussed these colors, they do often have some grounding and real world effects. However, it is difficult to determine the relationship whether the color itself is inherently holds value it is simply the experiential cultural weight we learn to place on the cover, color. 
Thanks for exploring this color theory video blog. There's more to see on the website, which is in the first comment. And please remember to like and subscribe. Bye guys.